So uh, let's start at the beginning. Um, so I'll try to fill in the blank. So Jim was raised off this place initially that I never heard of, St. Simon's Island, which is off of Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, He's raised, raised by his great grandmother. Uh, he always felt abandoned by his mom. When so old, I, I, I believe his mom sent for him to live with her in Great Neck, uh, Long Island. But he had a bad relationship with her. And his father, Swinton, uh, was a boxer. Um, and he barely saw his father. So if we take St. Simon's, Long Break, New York, uh, Long in, in Long Island, his mom, Teresa, and Swinton, how did all this stuff come together to become the man who was Jim Brown? Well, it's interesting because it, it, to me it's cinematic in terms of how it explains the person Jim Brown was going to become, particularly his politics. Because St. Simon Island, where he was born, is one of those areas of the country, particularly in Jim Brown's first decade of life when he lived there, which is the mid-1930s into the mid-1940s. It was a place that, the only way I can put this is it's a place that white supremacy left alone is the way that I would describe it. Obviously issues on St. Simon of poverty uh, have everything to do with white supremacy, but it was a black community on St. Simon's Island. White people thought that the marshy landscape could not be tamed. And so therefore when uh, black communities settled there uh, and not just in the antebellum period, but also at a time when uh, chattel slavery was, was completely legal, accepted and defended in the South, you had autonomous communities on St. Simon Island, autonomous black communities. And then there was a major push to remove uh, black people from the communities that they had built and make these golf courses once they figured out uh, how to do that uh, in terms of draining the marshes and making nice greens. And today, St. Simon Island and its uh, twin Sea Island are very exclusive, very white resorts where <laughs> The, the very black people who used to be masters of these islands now work mm -hmm. in low income jobs. So I find it fascinating that Jim Brown's first 10 years are in a place that speaks to the idea of black self-sufficiency and the idea of black people having their own piece of the United States as a way to live in a, in a buffer zone um, in a racist society. I think that's very interesting and influential to him. He wrote about in his book, his first book that he wrote called Off My Chest, his first of two memoirs, which he wrote in the mid 60s, mm. that he knew that the the Igbo tribe uh, from, I believe, Angola uh, was enslaved and brought over to St. Simon. And they, they sooner jumped off a cliff than be enslaved. Mm. And for him, that was an ultimate act of, of heroism. It's like you either live one way or you don't live at all. Mm -hmm. And so you have all of that mix of sort of black nationalism, black self-sufficiency in St. Simon. And then he's sent to move to Great Neck, New York, 